Come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, happy birthday, church. We, uh, we have been on quite the long journey. And you know what I've discovered this past week? I talked to us. I've talked to people about how our birthday is coming up. And I have found that some people don't know when we were born. Right? So I've been talking to people. And um, I discovered a lot of people think that the, the church was born when Christ was born and came on the earth. If you think about being Christians, right, we think about when Christ was born. But our story, our story about being born as the church starts back even before that. I would say, I would say being conceived as the church starts all the way back, back in the story, in stories in Genesis. Now there was a story in Genesis about the Tower of Babel. You just heard the story. And it's a story where, where God had created the human race. God had created us. And, and you all remember, when God created us, we were told we were going to do two things. Love God, love each other. And God was going to grace us with all of the memory, the reason, and the skill, everything that we needed to accomplish loving God and loving each other. And set us out. And then what did we do? We said... Let's make a tower instead and be taller than God. And that was not what God wanted us to do, was it? So God said, no, 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 no. You have more homework to do. And so God scattered us, gave us different languages, sent us out, and we were, and we were divided and we were apart. And we see all the pain that comes from being divided and apart. But... But God didn't leave us alone. God nurtured us and was present with us this whole time as we, as we grew and we matured and, and became the people that God knew we had the ability to be. God didn't leave us alone. Like a good teacher even didn't leave us alone with our homework. God sent us homework to go and be people who love God and love each other. But came to help us and said, I will sit with you and do it with you. Came as Jesus. I will show you how to love God and how to love each other. And then, and then when we were big, big and old enough to go and do it on our own, Jesus stepped back and said, okay, now I'm leaving, and it's your turn to do it. And we all said, wait a minute, Jesus, I don't know if we can do this alone without you. We need you here to do this with us, Jesus. Said, no, as long as I'm here doing it for you, you'll never do it yourselves. As long as I'm here sitting and dining with the tax collectors and the sinners, I don't want to do it for you. I want you to sit with the tax collectors and the sinners and dine with them. I don't want to be the one who always gets down on my hands and knees and shows you that by leading, you lead by serving, by washing one another's feet. I want you to go and lead in this world by washing one another's feet. You go and do it. And again, he said, oh, Jesus, I don't think we can do this without you. But Jesus said, it's all right. You won't be alone. Because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon all of us, and then you will be the church. That will be the birth of the church. And then the Pentecost came. The Holy Spirit came just as Jesus said it would. And notice what happens in the story of the Pentecost. We gather. It's a reversal of the Tower of Babel, isn't it? Just as we had all been scattered because we had taken our memory and our reason and our skill and we had used it to try to say, well, let's be better than God. Now, now we've been given a chance to be the church, to come together in all of our differences. God didn't wipe away our differences. Right? God didn't make us all the same Elamites. Right? God kept us all different from one another, but said, you have that memory, that reason, that skill, and now you are going to gather together as a people, and you're going to love God and love one another, just like I knew you could, just like I know you will. 
And that is the day the church is born. So I've been telling this story to folks celebrating the birthday of the church all this past week. Um, and I've been traveling, as some of you know. I was in Houston at a mental health first aid training. And I was just amazed to see there were 20, 25 of us in the room getting trained to be mental health first aid trainers. And we were about as different as you could be. There were people that were all over the spectrum, uh, socioeconomically, politically. Um, there were folks who were, who were white and who were black, who were straight and gay, folks who were uh, professional clinical psychologists and painters, right? All over the map. We were so different, but we were the same in that we were all gathered together for that purpose of being there to help love each other. We believed in this idea that if we can go out into the world and love one another. So we were being trained to do mental health first aid in our communities and then go and share that with our communities that were going to be so different across this country. Northerners and Southerners, East Coast people and West Coast people, Californians and Texans and New Yorkers gathering together. And then I went to, and then later this week, I went up this past week, I went up to Tyler and I was at a different seminar where we were gathering for um, uh, community engagement and racial reconciliation. And again, people who were so different from each other, rich and poor, people who were black and white, men and women, young and old, all gathering together, so different from each other and yet sharing this common belief that God God had given us memory and reason and skill. And God gave that all to us for a reason. So that we could go out into the world and be those people who love God and love each other. So I've been so impressed this past week to be surrounded by people who, who, have, who have done their homework, who have decided we're going to take all of these gifts God has given us and we're going to choose, are we going to, are we going to build a tower of Babel, or are we going to build a church with them? And I come back here, and I'm so impressed with the people at St. Stephen's, when I see how different we all are from each other, when I see how, how we, are, we are about as diverse a group of people gathered in a church as I have seen anywhere. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, we share our gifts and our strengths and our skills, and we use that to go and feed people at some other place. Or we use it to go and do mental health first aid trainings in our community for our neighbors and children in our schools and our first responders. Or even to go in Rose Hall after the service and have a cup of coffee with one another and just say, I'm so glad to be here with you. We use these differences that God has given us as a gift and celebrate this on this Pentecost. It's the birthday of the church, the birthday of us going out into the world and saying, God, God, we are going to be the people you made us to be on this day. So I want to encourage y'all to look through, as we, as we pray our prayers, as we go through our service, even when we do our post-communion prayer, as we go out into the world, look at how we pray about being the church. Look at how we celebrate that, that not even despite our differences, but in the midst of our differences, what a gift we've been given. And look at how we pray about how God has given us the Holy Spirit to take these gifts and to go out and to be the church on this day. So watch that. Too. And I give thanks on this day for the church. I give thanks for, for the people of St. Stephen. I give thanks for all of the things we get to do together with each other. Thanks be to God on this day, and happy birthday, church. Happy Pentecost, everyone.